All right, so continuing uh, from last week, we uh, had the ability or the chance to create a virtual server. All the steps are there. We're going to follow them together one more time. And like I said, the, the first couple of times, we have to start from scratch every time. But then when we come back the third and subsequent days, you should have the experience now to, to get up and running. So my sheet number one talks about setting up WAMP server and the very first thing we need to do then is launch the WAMP server app which is right on your desktop right do you see that WAMP server icon on the desktop go ahead and double click it you don't get any pop-up that tells you welcome to WAMP server you might get a little bit of a uh, a little window a little W that appears in the corner it may go away or may not but you should see a little green W at the bottom. If you don't see it, it might be hidden inside of that double arrow. And you'll know that this worked if you've got a green W there. So if you've got the green W, that means you've got WAMP running. Go ahead and click it, and then select localhost from the menu. So localhost is that um, is the name is one of the names of the um, one of the names that we can use for WAMP. It's uh, interchangeable to some degree. Uh, localhost is the virtual server that lives on this computer. Um, the address is simply http colon slash slash localhost, which is which should appear here. And remember, this is a local host. This is a server on this computer. It's not accessible by anyone on the internet. So this is not a real site that is up online for anyone to access. So if you got if you got this screen, very good. You've got the WAMP server screen. My notes here are talking about downloading it, running it, installing it. And the note is on sheet number one, item number three, that's how you get back to the screen if you want to in the future. Either type localhost or you type the IP address, those numbers, both should work, either or. We've got WAMP server. Sheet number two. Sheet number two says to download the WordPress software. It's already downloaded on our computers. I'll, I'll remind you where it's at in a moment. But uh, we download the WordPress software. Ours is in a, on the C drive. I'll show you in a moment. And then we're going to copy that WordPress folder into the www folder in the WAMP folder. And then that basically puts the WordPress software uh, ready into WAMP so that we can use it. So let's go to the desk, uh, let's go back to computer window on the desktop. Open the local disk C. This time C as in cat, not Z. C, the local disk C. you'll scroll down and you'll see a folder called WordPress. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy and then paste this folder. So go ahead, when you see the WordPress folder, right-click it, copy. So copy the WordPress folder. A couple of people last time had an issue here. You want to open WAMP folder, double-click WAMP, right there. And then you want to open the www folder. And now that you're in the www folder, right click and paste. So let that copy over. You should see the WordPress folder inside of the www folder.
So once you've got that WordPress folder in there, the next step on the instructions here is that we're going to go to step two to create this uh, database to connect the WordPress software to the database. Then we can install WordPress and then get started actually doing some work. We have to do this basic server stuff in the beginning and then we can get some real work done. I'll help you in just a moment. So what you want to do is go back to the folder. Uh, I'm sorry, back to the web browser. And you can either click the, the tools down at the bottom here, PHP My Admin, or to get some practice, you can type the address, localhost slash PHP My Admin. So when you're at the PHP My Admin screen, this screen is for managing databases. We don't have a database ready for our WordPress site yet. So according to my sheet here, uh, we'll go to the Databases tab at the top. We'll, uh, in the Create Database box, we will create a brand new database called WordPress. So create a database and we'll call it WordPress. So that was step two on sheet number two, we created a database. Now, obviously I'm following my sheets pretty much, aren't I? So let's take a, a moment because like I said, I won't always be there to help you. You try for a moment, and then I'll catch up with you. You try number three. You try to do this part. Install your WordPress. If you put your WordPress folder into the WW folder, and if you created that database like we just did, you should be able to do this. So try this for a moment. Sheet number two, step number three. Uh, try to go through that, and then try to get to the part uh, step 3K. And we'll take it from there in a moment. So try that for a bit. Oh, 
That's a good point. When you get to the part about a username and a password, you can either use what's on the notes here or use your own. Or maybe it's Let me do step three now in just a moment. Let's see if you were able to do it. Let me get a quick show of hands. How many of you got to step three K at this point? Okay. If you didn't, that's okay. Let me do it in just one moment. Did you create a database on that? Let me show you then. If you're a little behind, don't worry. Let me show you, and you might catch up. So what I'm saying here on these steps are, well, we've got a database, and we've got the WordPress software. Now we need to basically install WordPress. So a lot of you already did it, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it now. So the address is localhost slash WordPress. And that pops up the installation screen. It asks you to select the language first. We saw this last time. Continue. It asks, it's going to ask you for this information, which we have. You click Let's Go. It's asking for the database name. You just created a database called WordPress. So that's WordPress. My instructions say to use the username root. And the instructions also say no password. So literally, no password. Or is that figuratively? No password. So uh, database host is localhost, because as I said, we're going to be using the term localhost often. 
And table prefix, don't worry about that. That's just something internal. So if that worked and you click Submit, well, let me do something wrong here. If this didn't work, you might get a pop-up, can't select database. That probably means you didn't create the database, so you want to make sure that you created the database. And if you did have the database, then it would tell you, yeah, then it would tell you we're ready to start. Okay, everyone, like I said, I'm glad you're helping your neighbors and such, but remember, keep it down a little bit, please. So you want to click Run the Install. And on my notes, they give you some suggestions here, but you can write whatever you want. A site title is the name of your site. The username, the suggestion is admin, and then the password is password suggestion. But you can write whatever you want here. This again, we can change this later if we want, but I'm going to create a, uh, a fictional website called Victor's Bakery. You can also do that or create anything else. The username as per my sheet, admin, and here capitalization doesn't matter. And then my password, I'll type password. I'm typing it with a capital W, a capital P. If you did not type it with a capital P, then don't type it with a capital P. I'm typing it with a capital P, so I'm going to remember that. And anyway, that's in my notes. Step 3, D, or actually down here, where are we? G and H. Yeah, so site title, add a username, admin, add a new password, and I've got capital P. Add an email. You know, if you forget your password, this will uh, try to remind you. You can retrieve your password, so add your, add your email. For the moment, turn off Allow Search Engines to index this site. The search engines won't find your site because it's not a real site. It's not online yet. It's on your personal computer. So we'll turn that off. We'll click Install WordPress. Hopefully then you get a success. Log in. And log in with the user and password we just set up a moment ago. If you followed my instructions exactly, you should know what it is. It's in the instruction. If you made your own username and password here, well, you should know what it is because you, you made it up. So let's pause a moment there. If this all worked, you should have the dashboard screen. This is where we're going to proceed at. There were still a couple question uh, people with hands up. Anyone need a little help, or are we ready to go? Okay. Let's answer that, and then we'll go.
So 
All right, so if this worked, now we have the WordPress dashboard. And yeah, it's a few steps to get to this point, but again, it's a necessary evil. This is a public computer lab at this college. Lots of classes are taught in these labs. Uh, in my perfect world, everyone would come in, and the prerequisite would be that everyone's already got a, WordPress, a GoDaddy site or a Bluehost site or something, and it's ready to go. And I just teach you what I wanted to teach you. But we have to do this the, the, this preliminary step where you have to do some stuff that you probably never did before, you just created a database. So pat yourself on the back, you are now a, word, uh, you are now a database administrator. <laughs> and then also now you're going to manage your server and all of that, so pat yourself on the back, now you're a server administrator. And you've just installed WordPress, so that's another congratulations for you, you're a software installer. <laughs> so we've got WordPress and all of those steps took us a little bit to set up but then it should go faster as we go on because we uh, we're gonna do them a few times and, and that sort of thing but we've got brand, right now a brand new empty clean WordPress site um, and I, we don't want to lose that we don't want to lose all the work that we're going to do today so at the end of the day we'll take time to to follow what I've got on on sheet number four we're not there yet but I've got sheet number four if you want to look ahead into that but that eventually when we do it that's going to be archiving this site saving it saving all of the 5,000 files that this site is made out of and you may not think it is but it is made out of hundreds if not thousands of files we're gonna save all of those files as per my instructions at the end of the day and you'll be able to take the site with you so you can work on it at home or better yet when we come back next week continue at this point instead of starting again but it does take a few steps doesn't it so what we're going to do is, we're done with sheet number two, I believe. Yeah, sheet number two ends there. I'm going to look at sheet number three. And again, we can print this out during the first break coming up soon. Because it is nice to have the sheet next to you while you're looking at the computer, isn't it? But you guys do have big monitors. You'll probably be able to manage moving the windows around and looking at it two at once. But if we look at number three, sheet number three, Here's some notes, number three. Notice for the Mac, there was only sheets one and two that were different. And then everyone else, three, four, five, six, etc., they're all going to be the same. But I'm just noting here that once you've got it set up, and let's say you close the window, how do I get back to it? Well, any web browser will work. When we clicked the WAMP icon in the corner here and clicked localhost, it opened our default browser, which on these computers is the Opera web browser. Maybe your favorite web browser at home is Safari or Internet Explorer or Chrome or Firefox, whatever. So any web browser will work for what we're talking about. And the note up here is that to get back to it, you just type the address, localhost slash WordPress, or the numbers. If you're on the Mac, you're going to type that address, a little bit different. But those two addresses get you back to the login screen, um, these addresses right here. So localhost slash WordPress slash WP admin. That's, and I made a mistake here, I just noticed. WP admin for the Mac, not WP addin. Admin. Those addresses will always take you back to your site. So what we'll do is we'll go through this sheet a bit, get acclimated with WordPress again, because this class is part one. It's, it's best for beginners to intermediate people, and then next month with the more advanced stuff. So my notes here are that what we're inside of here is the dashboard or the back end. The back end is where we have all of these items in the control panel, in the dashboard. Uh, this is where we control all aspects of the site. The front end is what users see, what they actually log, 
what they actually see as products or whatever. It's the main website. Remind me, because we did this last time. We're in the dashboard, we're in the back end. How do we get to the front end? Like a regular user? Anyone remember that? You want to hover over the name of your site, top left, and then visit site. And then that takes us to the front end. This is what people will see when they visit our site. They won't see the dashboard. We don't want them to. Then they'd wreak havoc on our site, wouldn't they? This is the front end. Okay, great. Looks pretty boring. Let's go back to the dashboard. How do we do that? Same thing. Same thing. Hover over. Not. Yeah. And notice there's shortcuts here. So if we quickly need to get into the header or widgets or whatever, which we'll talk about later, that's a quick way to get to them. But if you click dashboard, that'll do it. And if you click the name of your site, that also does it. That's also a shortcut. So just click on the name of your site and that takes you back and forth. Front end, back end. Let's go back to the back end, the dashboard. The very first thing that we see here is this welcome screen. We've got a brand new clean installation of WordPress. Here's some items about getting started, customizing your site. We'll look at that later. Um, changing the theme. We did a little bit of that. Some steps, write a blog post, add an about page, etc. We'll, we'll, do, we'll do that. We've got some quick boxes here. One of the things about WordPress is it's modular in that there are many boxes that we can work with and it's also customizable. So if you want to rearrange things, all you have to do is notice if you put your mouse on top of the title of a box here, you get that four-headed arrow. And what that means is if you click and drag, you can rearrange your boxes. Maybe you want to see activity first. Maybe you want to add a glance over here. It's customizable. That's not too important right here, but when we talk about, for example, actually adding products to our site, our screen that shows all of the options for adding products is really long. So instead of scrolling down a couple of screenfuls to edit the, the price, for example, we can drag that little box that has the price at the top so that we always access it quickly. And that's just simply dragging and dropping a box. Sometimes we have so many boxes available to us that they're not all visible. I believe we saw this briefly last time. But if not, notice at the very top right corner we have Screen Options tab. Click that little Screen Options tab at the top right. And this is what's currently visible is At a Glance, Activity, Quick Draft, WordPress News, and Welcome. Well, if I don't care about this WordPress News box, what do you think we do? Just unselect it or turn the checkbox off. That's off there. If we actually want it to come back, well, you just turn it on again, it comes back. Again, not too impressive on this screen, but when we look at other more complex screens, it's useful to turn things on or off to streamline your workflow. And actually, oddly, sometimes, some important options are not turned on by default. We have to turn them on up on the screen options. And I'll tell you which ones they are, of course, as we get to them. But I don't need to see the WordPress news. The rest I can keep. We've got something that I'll talk into about in more detail a little bit later, but do you see this big orange number here? Updates 1, and then over here, Plugins 1, and then at the top we've got this spinning arrow with a 1. At the top you will see that if there are any updates, and WordPress is, uh, is constantly evolving. The organization behind WordPress is updating it and improving it. And so new versions are going to be available. Just like perhaps in the old days we, would, we were using Windows 95 and then Windows Millennium and then Windows XP and then Vista and 7, etc., etc. Windows evolves. The Mac evolves. You probably remember Mac OS 10.7 and then maybe 8 and etc., etc. So WordPress evolves also. It's, it's updated. But what's a little more complicated is that the WordPress core software could need an update. 
as well as something called plugins that we'll talk about later, and also themes. So there's three big things that could need updates. The core WordPress software, plugins, or themes. And all of that will be listed on that updates screen. Let's take a quick look at it. Click that spinning arrow up there or click the updates menu item here under dashboard. Click updates. This is telling me we have the latest version of WordPress. Great. Version 4.2.2. .2. Then we've got a section for plugins. The following plugins have new versions. Something called Akismet. We have version 3.1.1 and 3.1.2 is the latest one. Notice here we've then got view version 3.1.2 details. Let's click that. This then is going to tell you what's been updated and when it was updated. Going back a while. And honestly, sometimes this is very technical. Sometimes this stuff, they, they tell you, we've reduced the amount of space Akisma uses in the comment meta table. Great, I don't know what that means. But this will try to tell you what has been updated. Maybe it'll say there are security updates or fixes. Maybe it'll tell you new features, etc. And the reason there are updates is because perhaps there are security issues, perhaps there are new features, um, factors like that. Because WordPress is the most popular uh, website design software at the moment, that also means it's the most popular target for the bad guys, for the virus writers, for the hackers, for the crackers, for all of the bad guys. And that means if they are the number one target, your website, in a sense, is also a target. I'm not saying be scared that they're hunting you and they're going to come after your site and they're going to hack you and steal all your credit card data. I'm just saying that because you're the biggest, you've, you're using the software that's the biggest name, you're, you're then a target. But the way to protect yourself against that are the updates. That's what they, they're there for, to update against potential issues. Unfortunately though, it's not cut and paste or cut and dry for me to say whenever there's an update, always update. That's a kind of worms too. Again, I'll talk about this in more detail, but I'm just letting you know the software is going to evolve. Updates are good in general. And a little bit later when we get more comfortable with WordPress, I'll go into detail about updates. For the moment then, don't worry about updates. Any questions about this screen? On my notes here, I talk about the difference between a post and a page, which I mentioned previously. Very briefly, a post is best for the blog. It changes often. And a page is best for a screen that doesn't change, like the About screen. We'll look at the media screen for our pictures and such. We'll talk about comments. WordPress is very cool because people can add comments to your site very easily. Actually, there's pros and cons to that, which I'll talk about. We can change the appearance, the theme of our site in appearance. We did that last time, I believe. Very easily we changed themes. We'll do it again later. And then to extend the capabilities of WordPress for more features, that those are plugins. We'll do this and then we'll take a break soon. Practice. We're going to add a new post. We're going to edit the About page. We're going to add media change theme, etc. So, um, I believe we did this also last time, so briefly. Uh, here under the posts menu item, if you hover, don't click it yet, if you hover we've got add new. Let's add a new post. Last time we were here we just did a little practice. Here we'll take it a little more seriously, but then of course we can change this whenever we want. I'm going to act like this is my real Victor's Bakery website. So you should also act about whatever site you created. Let's act like it's our real site. This is going to be the very first post, the very first blog post. And for this first blog post, I'm going to write something basic about, you know, now open for business. Um, we're happy to blah, blah, blah. So 
the title of this post, I'll just write, we're open for business. You can write the same, or if you're a little more creative than me, you can do so. I'm getting this distraction-free pop-up that is actually distracting me, so I'm going to dismiss it. It's just telling you that the newer version of WordPress is more focused on writing, <laughs> so great, let's dismiss that. I'm going to write something brief here. Victor's Bakery is now open for business. On our site, you'll be able to see our great selection of cakes, pies, cookies, and the rest. You'll also be able to buy anything you want. So anything you want to write here. What's that? What's that? Oh, you said I forget it. So you can write whatever you want, and basic text editor here. Last time I mentioned you can format things a little bit more with a special icon. Anyone remember that? How you add more of those editing features? Because we've only got these basic ones here. What about some more advanced editing features? The very last one, toolbar toggle. Click that one, you get a few more editing options. So we don't need to get too complex um, what, with what we're writing. I want to point out other other sections within the this screen uh, on the very top right of the editing area if you're familiar with other web design software like Dreamweaver has anyone used Dreamweaver before raise your hands a few people our websites are made with a variety of code and what we're what WordPress does for us is to shield us from that most of the time that's what's happening here. We're in the visual editor. So I can use icons, I can type, I can dra drag and drop and such. But if we know any code, we can switch over to the text view, which I would have liked them to call it the code view because this, this still seems like text, but it's actually code. If you click on text here, this shows you this is the code that was written for me. If you change any colors and so forth, it wrote the code for you. So if you look on the top right corner of your editor here, you've got the text tab. So if you do know some HTML or CSS for styling, you could do things here that are not built into the, the, the visual editor. Like, I want to make columns. I don't see any button for me to make columns. Well, if I know a little bit about HTML code, I can write the code to make columns myself. If I want to have a background color, behind something, I don't see any icon here to make a background color. But if you know the code, you might be able to accomplish some things that are not available for you. That of course requires that you have some experience or taken a class or something. You can do something like that. Now I'm going to gloss over what I just did, but Later we'll talk about, in the advanced class, a bit more about perhaps editing a little code. On the top right corner, we've got our publish box. We've got save draft, preview, publish, or trash it. Click the preview button at the top right under the publish box click preview that should open a new tab so that's a little confusing if you didn't notice because there's no back button there's the tab that we were editing in and then the preview tab that opens up 
So this is what it'll look like actually as part of my website, as part of the theme. Let me go back to the tab where I was editing. This is still in draft mode. It's going to be visible when we publish. And this is cool here. Publish immediately, or if we click Edit, we can schedule this. In my blogging class, I go into more detail about this because in the blogging class, I talk in there about that it's good practice to help your SEO to publish your blogs on a regular basis or often-ish. Uh, one month, uh, once a month, publish something on your blog. It's a good starting point, a good goal for beginners. Publish something on the blog once a month. The, mo the blogs that have much more, the sites that have much more traffic and revenue and such, publish more often, once a week, maybe once a day, maybe several times a day. And so I talk about in that class, instead of me stressing every day or every end of the month to publish something new, I can spend one weekend, write 10 blogs, schedule them there, and then they will automatically publish when I told them to publish. That's the way I'm not, that way I'm not tied to the computer. We're not going to schedule a post at the moment, but uh, we'll get back to this, and I'm showing here that we can schedule posts. You've got these various options here under Format, and this is Standard. We can publish any kind of content we want, and if we organize it under the formats here, uh, depending on your theme, the screen will look a little different. Like if we put in a video into this post and selected the video format, the screen is a little more optimized to show the video. If we have a gallery of pictures, we can select gallery. There's no wrong one to choose, so standard is often good. But if you do want to tailor your content to a particular format, you can do that and you may or may not need to. If you keep everything as a standard post, you won't have any problem, really. Yes? You could. You definitely could. If you keep it on standard, that might give you the best results. But if you put video and you have video and a gallery, well, it's going to want to look more optimized for a video, and therefore your gallery might not look as good. If you keep it on standard, that might be the best way to mix the two. I'll keep mine on standard. Is there a specific way to download pictures on? We're going to add some pictures in a bit, uh, and there's a few there's a few ways. Um, we can upload it ourselves, which we'll see. We can we can borrow a picture from a website. We'll see that. Uh, we can make nice galleries, so definitely. WordPress is pretty powerful, and it works really well with my multimedia. Uh, we've got categories and tags. We might not really need it very early on, but when we get to our products, we'll, we'll want to do this, because um, if we put certain products in a certain category, that'll help people find those products easier because WordPress has a built-in feature to search. Someone types in pecan pie and if you had categorized your products properly like all pecan pies, cherry, cherry pies, key lime pies are in the pies category, people can find that easier. So we won't categorize just yet and tags are similar, they're kinda like keywords for organization. And then we've got featured image. Again, we'll add that later. And this is going to depend on your theme. I'm going to say that a lot during this, these classes. It depends on your theme. I'm going to say that a lot. Because it, you can change the appearance of your site. And a theme might display a featured image as a thumbnail, it might display it as a big, bold picture. It might not even use it or display it. 
So some options, some features are going to be um, are going to depend on the theme as to how visible they are. Um, so the, these are our various options for adding a post, but that's not all. Where's that screen again where we can look at these extra features that might be hidden? Screen options. Let's look at the screen options. Look at all these things that are off. We have format, category, etc. Excerpt is off. Send trackbacks. I don't know what that is, but it's off. Custom fields, discussion, slug, author. Let's turn them all on for a moment. Expert, uh, excerpt, send trackbacks, custom fields, discussion, slug, and author. And notice now we have a much longer screen. And we've got a number of columns, one or two. Enable full height editor and distraction free functionality. Yeah, so those two are fine. Don't worry. Excerpt. Excerpts are optional handcrafted summaries of your content that can be used by your theme. So again, it depends on your theme. I've dealt with themes that they take this ex excerpt and they put it uh, in the blog section like a little snippet. I've seen some themes that use the excerpt as sort of like the preamble to a post. When you actually read the post, excerpt appears first before the rest of the text. So it depends on your theme. Usually what I do to figure out if this is usable or not is I is I I change some of these settings and then later on that helps me understand how my theme is using it so let's try this under excerpt let's tr just put here uh, testing the excerpt um, option I don't know where that's gonna show up really is my point so if I add something and then visit my site then I'll see where this shows up WordPress is a, is a very cool modern software because it's intelligent to a degree in that if any other website out there that also uses WordPress links to your site, you will get a notification that says there's a new link to your site. And so here it talks about, related to that, trackbacks. And it says trackbacks are a way to notify legacy systems that you've linked to them. If you link other WordPress sites, they'll be automatic notified. No other action, action necessary. So for us, it doesn't matter this box here. It's kind of advanced, and we don't need it. But I'm just telling you that sites that link to each other that are WordPress sites will sort of communicate with each other. And that's important for SEO, which we go into more detail about that in the SEO class. custom fields depending on your theme there may be a little bit of uh, customization you can do here I've dealt with some uh, sites and themes that this is used for more complex things with uh, with products but uh, doesn't make much sense for us at the moment discussion allow comments allow trackbacks and pingbacks so the trackbacks and pingbacks are just the connections between websites that's good to leave it on because I want connections between my website and another site. And then it's up to you to decide, do I want comments here? By default, people, anyone can write anything on this blog post. Actually, anywhere on your site. But you may not want that. So we'll look at, we'll look at how to fix that globally later. This is saying, on this post, my welcome post, do I want people to comment? And if I say no, I don't want any crazy people saying anything, I can turn it off. <laughs> but I would suggest we leave these on, and on another screen we'll talk about moderating comments. We'll talk about approving comments, so that then any person can write anything they want, any crazy person can write any crazy thing they want, but it won't appear until you approve it. So if you just turn them off, no one will be able to comment at all, even good comments. So I would say leave that on and then we'll talk about approving comments a little later. Slug, don't worry about that just yet. And then author, admin. If I had more than one user that can manage my site here, you can have this attribution. You can 
mark here who wrote this. So in my case, as I've said before, I'm part of a company that we do websites. We are pretty full featured, so we can do their website. We can write their blogs also. And so I've got my own login as an administrator, the Victor login, and I log into the client's website. I write a blog post, and then I go in and say, actually, you know, the, the boss wrote it. So I'm kind of ghostwriting it. That's um, something that might be useful to you. You can have different people logging into the site, but then the author of all the blog posts could be a particular user. If you've only got one user, then this doesn't matter, of course. But for your purposes, if you've got several writers on your site, several contributors, this might be useful. Any questions on this screen? Well, let's go back to the top right, scroll all the way up, and let's publish it. Let's visit site. Let's go to the front end. So hover there, visit site. We're on the home screen. There's what I just wrote. There's the hello world, the default post. Now we've published something, a blog post. Let's take a break and when we come back we'll talk about adding pages and then we'll talk about changing the default settings of WordPress because perhaps you don't want to blog on the home screen. You want to blog in its own little blog screen and on the home screen you want a static page. We'll show you how to do that right after the break. It's 7.17. We'll be back in 10 minutes. 7.27. And we'll go on. <laughs> 